Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how to create an interactive product catalog in Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, I'll go over how to set up two multi-state objects, link them to button structures, as well as add hyperlinks. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our interactive product catalog. We're gonna start things off by creating a multi-state object with the product images, and then add a secondary multi-state object with the details as well as a button that we'll use to hyperlink to a fictional URL, taking customers to a fictional site where they can get more information. So, but like I said, let's bring in the images first. There's six of them all together. And what I'll do is I like bringing them in one at a time and then resizing them. Now, because these are the main images up top, I do want them to be a little bit larger because when we click the buttons down below, we want these to appear at larger scale, much like a featured image of sorts. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna place them and then I'm gonna stack them on top of each other and I'll show you why in a second. I'm gonna bring in that planer Maybe make it a little bit bigger. And again, to make images uh, larger as a shortcut is Option Command greater than. If you're on Windows, that's Control, uh, Shift Control greater than. Okay, so let's move that over here. I have a reciprocating saw. Let's go ahead. Yeah, that's a good size there. Bring that there. I have another drill. And you can see why I'm doing this, just to make sure that they're similar in size. And I can go ahead and maybe make that a little bit larger as well. And the good thing about this is you can always go back and edit these images if they need to be edited in size. So let's bring in this last one here. And we'll size this last one and then we'll create it into a multi-state object. So something like that is good. Now these images, I've gone ahead and removed the background. If you have, um, you know, if you're doing this on a white canvas like this, you can just bring in images on white backgrounds. But of course, if you're gonna use a, a different colored background, that won't work. You'll see the, the background of that image. So either remove the image background or bring it in on a white background, but place it on a white canvas like you see here. So before I go ahead and make this a uh, multi-state object, I have to go into my layers panel and what I wanna do is rank these so they're in order of how they're gonna appear when I click the buttons. So right now they're actually opposite. So I'm gonna bring saw up and then drill, planer, reciprocating saw one, impact drill, and then that last one. So they're actually in the order if I turn these off they're in the order that are is it matching and it corresponds with the buttons down below. And that's exactly what you want. So let me put the layers panel back. And now I'm going to open up, I'm gonna open up my object states window, which can be found in window, interactive object states. And while you're there, you can also open buttons and forms and animation. Those are the three panels we'll work on in this lesson. So I'm gonna select with my selection tool, go ahead and select all of these. And let's go ahead and in your alignment controls, align the horizontal centers and the vertical centers. And just make sure that you're selected to align to selection and not the other ones. We want to align them to the selection. And then let's go ahead and in the object states window, convert selection to multi-state object and you can see that these are now on their own state. And I'm just clicking through them as you see. And I do wanna rename this as Power Tools Images, okay? And this is gonna make things easier when you're actually setting up the buttons later on. Let's go ahead and look and see. Yeah, that's a good size. Maybe bring it down a little bit here to the right a bit more, perfect. Okay, let's go ahead now and set up a secondary multi-state object with the details to go along with these images. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a secondary multi-state object which will have the product details, the product name, as well as a buy online button, which we'll create a hyperlink to. 
On the left hand side of my screen, I have six grouped text frames with the details, the name and those buttons. I'm in my um, control panel here. I'm going to make sure that the uh, vertical centers are aligned. Again, I do want to stack them together. Make sure that you go ahead beforehand, which I have done, and reorder them the way you want in the layers panel. And in the object states, go ahead and convert that into a multi-state object as well. And you can see the states I have here are in order. So there's the saw, the drill, the planer, the saw, the drill, and the saw, okay? So these all correspond with the buttons we're going to set up as a final step. So what do I wanna do now? Down below here, we're going to repeat the images at smaller scale in order that we've set them up here. And then we're gonna set up buttons with them. So again, at one of the time, I'm gonna bring in the saw first. And again, you want to resize to what you want and you're just eyeballing these. You're not, it doesn't have to be perfect at, at the beginning. A lot of the fine tuning happens after all the images are actually placed. So that's a good, I like the size of those. And then let's bring in the planer next. Okay, so I'm gonna bump that up just a little bit. Okay. Reciprocating saw one. This one's tricky because the shape is a little, and I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. And then remember, option command greater than, use your right arrow keys. That could be a little bit bigger, it's good. Okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a copy by holding Alt, and then hold Alt and create another copy. And then you can just go ahead and drop, you can replace those images by dropping them in with the new ones, oops. Make sure you click the content grabber and then you can resize that. See how that looks, yep, that looks good. And then we got one more here, so let's go ahead and drop that last one in. Click the content grabber and let's just make that a little bit smaller. That's good, something like that. Again, you can go revisit this after the fact, but let's look, take a look at, what I like to do, do is zoom out and they all look pretty good. This driver drill, the impact driver looks a little small compared to the driver, the drill above. So what I would do is just make it a little bit bigger, click the frame, maybe bring that down a bit, something like that. You can also grab these and then just move them up a bit just to create a little bit more space. Again, there's a lot of fine tuning here, so that's good. I do like how that's set up now. Now we can go ahead and add button structures to these images um, with rollover appearance effect um, that will trigger both of these, okay? So let's start with the Cirque Soft first. I'm gonna click on that, and this is where we're gonna need buttons and forms. So go ahead and click that, and in the type we want button, and let's name this button Circular Saw Dash One. In the Actions uh, dropdown, click the plus symbol and work your way down to go to state, not, not go to next state, we want to go to a specific state. And you can see the state that it defaults to is the first one, so the Power Tools images. Now we want to click on this and this main image to appear, so it's going to start at state one, perfect, we'll leave it at that. Let's click rollover, okay that will create a rollover effect. But after you click rollover, go back and click normal. Then double click the button. Work your way to the right hand side under the control panel, or I'm sorry, the properties panel. And in the, in the opacity, let's make that 85%. So now we have a subtle rollover effect or appearance where it goes from normal and then when we hover over it, it'll light up, okay? Let's go ahead and actually before we move on, Let's add a secondary action to this. So click that plus button again. 
and let's go to estate. And in this case, instead of power tool images, we have to go to, oh, we didn't rename that, did we? Um, let's rename that so just so we're on the same page here. It's important and I didn't do it. So click on the details. It's not gonna be multi-state five because if you have multi, multi-state objects, it's gonna get confusing. So this will be product details dash, or just say two is fine. Perfect. All right, let's make it dash two. Perfect, okay, let's go back down, click on circular saw, let's go buttons and forms, and we want products, product details dash two, and we'll leave it on state one. Let's do the same thing to the, the cordless drill, so let's click that, let's turn that into a button, and let's call it cordless drill button, okay? And in the actions, we want it to go to a state. Power tools images is good, but we want it to go to state two. You can see the little thumbnail images to show you, which is very helpful. So oftentimes you don't have to rename it because you could just look at that little thumbnail. So there it is there, state two. Click on rollover, go back to normal, double click to drive into that appearance rollover. And then we'll make that normal rollover at 85% opacity. And then you can see that we have a subtle uh, rollover effect. Let's go on to the third one. So the planer, let's turn that into a button and let's call it planer button. And the action will be go to state, power tools images, state three. Um, let's create a secondary action that goes to a state and then let's change this to product details too and this is going to state 3 so you can see state 3 state 3 but they're different multi-state objects I'm gonna finish this off and then we'll test it out so I just finished off the buttons let's go ahead and take a look in the EPUB preview window just to see how everything appears on the page. You'll notice that when I hover over the images, they have that subtle rollover appearance, which is great. I'm gonna click on the cordless power drill. You can see that changes with the details. Because we set up two different multi-state objects, you, you have the ability to do these things, which is great. So that all works fine, but I do wanna add an animation to the, the details so they come in from the right, so they fly in from the right. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my object states window, click on state one and double click on um, the details. Now I should, have, I should have grouped these previously, that's okay. What I'm gonna do is go to my animations window. If you're gonna do this, go ahead and add these in the te same text frame to save yourself the time. Uh, I should have done that before, that's okay. If you've done it this way, I'll show you how to add animation to both. So again, go to, go to state one, and then you have to double click to drive into that state. Go to animation and just choose fade in from right. Okay, or fly in from right, I should say. And you can see the indicator showing me it's gonna come from that area. One second's fine. Do the same to the headline. So fly in from right. Perfect, now because I set it up this way, I have to go to Window, Interactive, and Timing. And you're gonna set up the timing so both of those, that, that headline and that text, play together. So click one, hold your Command key. Let me move that up. Hold your Command key and then click the Play Together icon, okay? That's the easy way of doing it. And I'll show you how that looks now you'll notice that I've set it only to that first one. So let's click that second. And then if I click the first, you see it comes in together, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and add it to the rest of them. And then I'll show you how that looks. So let's go to the, the second object state. So click this, go to state two, double click to drive into that text frame, go to animation and choose fly in from right, click on that headline, fly in from right, click on timing, 
hold your command or control key if you're on Windows, click both, and then play together. Go to Object States, State 3, click that text frame, double click to drive into it. The preset for that will be flying from right, click on the little headline, flying from right, and let's go to timing and play those together. Let me just finish these off and then I'll show you how that looks as an overall presentation. Okay, I've gone ahead and added the rest of the animation to fly in from the right on those product details. One thing I want to note, the event has to be on state load. It should be if you set up your multi-state objects properly. If it does say on page load, just click this and make sure that on page load, um, which is not even in here, um, is not checked, okay? So let's have a look now and see how everything appears. And then we'll add a hyperlink to that uh, one of those buttons. So you can see it doesn't appear until you click one of them, which is good. But they all fly in from the right, which adds just a little bit more interactivity to, to the overall layout. So that all works. What I'm gonna do now is set up a hyperlink to the buy online button, and we'll set it up to just a, a URL that uh, we can link to. Okay, so as a last step, what I wanna do is create a hyperlink on one of these buy online buttons that will essentially take the consumer from your interactive catalog to a website where they could possibly purchase one of these products. So to do that, click on the multi-state object with the details, double click to drive into that button, and we're gonna do just that. We're gonna create a button. I'm going to click on the type, click button. This will be called buy online. I'm just gonna do it to one of them, just as an example. Um, on release or tap is just fine. In the actions, click the plus sign, and we're gonna add the action to go to URL. And for this, because there's not a actual website set up for these products, I'm just gonna put in www.montilladesign.com slash tutorials. And that should do it. So you would just apply the same, um, the same technique to the rest of the buttons, obviously with different URLs directing consumers to those products. And let's have a look. I'm gonna click my EPUB preview window. Just gonna make it a little bit bigger here. Perfect, okay, so I can click through. You can see all that works still. And now I can go back to my first one, the circular saw, and you'll notice that my cursor has become a hand. I'm gonna click that, and it'll take me to Montilla Design in my tutorials. So that's how you set up a button as well that uh, is hyperlinked to a URL. So that's an example of how you can create an interactive product catalog in Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new videos have been posted. If you'd like to learn more about interactive design, go ahead and click the playlist above.